my truth uncensored My whole network viral Twelve and a half get you a quarterback I got them shits flying like spirals I like my truth uncensored Today, this afternoon, uh, NBA Youngboy's attorney you know, pretty much told us that NBA Youngboy was taken into custody because of a social media post, you know, because he was on probation. And the easiest way to break it down is that when you're on probation, it's not about you doing a crime. You can't be affiliated. Hmm. So that shooting that happened in Miami, you know, the other day, it was a video that came out that showed him tending to his, um, I think it's his girl or something like that. They seen that video as proof of him being involved with that, as well as news reports coming out that said that was between his entourage and somebody else's entourage. I mean, this was what it was. You know what I mean? That came out. So um, they're holding him. He'll be in there for at least 30 days. People, whoever, anybody who's been on probation, you you get violated. You got to do a certain amount. You you know, you can come out. Like, like some guys get 160, 180. So you might get, you might get a, a 365 bid you got to do. So right now, 30 days for him. But um, it's crazy because they also said that he wouldn't be charged for this at all. But on the other end, because he was involved with it, now he's back in jail right now. You see the mugshot there. The people who see this later. When you think about him being young boy, man, back in the, um, back in jail, man. When I think about, well, when you when you hear social media, you automatically want to go, damn, he's stupid. Why do he have his phone out? But it wasn't him. It was not, and like you kind of made me aware of. It was just bystanders out here looking at the situation. Mm. Him attending to his girlfriend who took a bullet for him. I mean, not um, intentionally, but took a bullet for him mm-hmm. and in a situation that got very real, very serious. And now because of a, a probation violation, he's going to be sitting back in jail. Um, it's energy. That's what I think about it. We talked about him often on here. We always start with him being very talented out of Louisiana. Um, one of the young boys and one of the young crop of young rappers that's telling a story and really could do this thing for real mm-hmm. for the younger, the youth, for the people that listen to that kind of genre of sound. And just time after time after time after time, all you hear is negative, 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 negative. He jumps on his live. It's defense. It's negative. It's negative. And that comes with it. I mean, when you have that kind of spirit and kind of that, that kind of energy, you bring on negative attention. And I don't try. I'm not I'm not wishing on anything, you know what I mean? But would you would you give him an excuse though? Because a lot of times, you know, we're talking about Kodak Black, and they're in the same age range. Um, I'm not NBA Young might be a little bit younger, if yeah, I'm not yeah, mistaken. Probably. You know what I mean? Do you give him that same excuse that you give somebody like Kodak and say, Well, he's just young. I expect this from this guy. He's a young man. Yeah, I do. But what I'm a lot more fearful of from NBA Young Boy than I am Kodak Black is that even though Kodak Black is doing a lot of self-inflicted things. To put himself in situations, you see NBA young boys energy bringing on other elements of negativity that could potentially get this young brother somewhere way more negative than jail. And that's what I don't want to see happen. Mm -hmm. So when I speak on NBA young boy and you may hear me maybe not put my arm around him like I would a Kodak Black, even though people take I get backlash for that because he's 21 years old. And I remember being 21 as much as you were a man and all this shit and being stupid and wishing somebody would have kind of schooled me. So that's what I do. But when you was 21, though, Sam, man, you wasn't going in there. I had my doing dad. You, you know what I'm saying? You wasn't doing with some of these guys. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Did. So it's not always. It can be because we all done some things in our 20s. Like, man, we would never do now. But um, it comes a point where you got to be responsible for your actions. You know what I mean? And if you see a pattern you know, uh, but there's a trail where, you know, pe- people starting to get shot, people going to jail. Like you said, it's the energy that's starting to come back. So um, just want to change that up, you know what I'm saying, and get out of that environment because it can only end a few ways, you know what I mean, with that type of, um, putting that type of energy out like that. But, uh, you know, again, we, we always want to see the best, you know, for these young dudes. I mean, young, black entrepreneur doing this thing, came out the hood and whatnot, traveling the world, he's famous, but at what cost? It's not worth your life. It's not worth probation violations for nutty shit like that. You got to, at some point, put the head on your shoulder and say, okay, I'm a businessman. I'm a corporation. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm going to get this bread and do what I got to do. Take care of my family. Extend it. We can't be going to jail. We can't be getting the shootouts. Not, I mean, shit can happen. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. It ain't like he went and was looking for whatever. You know, Obviously, they started dumping on him. I suppose they returned fire. Whatever. However the story went, we wasn't there. But you know, it's just the point where we know those bullets don't got no names on his girl got hit. It could have yeah. been him. We could be here talking about, you know, this dude had this happened to this person, 
So yeah, niggas gotta be careful, man. Be 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 careful. I often when I when I facts when when we when we talk about these people, when we talk about the celebrities, whoever we talk about, I like to put myself in their shoes, even kind of looking and reflecting back after. And like I said, looking back at a night being 19 years old, 15, whatever, having all of this fame in this generation with everybody at their fingertips able to do what they want. And we see grown men and women responding weird when it comes to people tapping their phones on them. Yeah. 830. When it comes to them, um, on social media so mm-hmm. you can only imagine what the young kids are going to do mm-hmm. and to do that and not know what kind of guidance they had around him what kind of father what kind of mother what kind of home upbringing we don't know once success came what kind of people were in their pockets what the trust is like i think that they just need to have a better wall of security and gaming them in how to move and how to react i really feel like if somebody was in an nba young boys corner in a kodak blacks corner and all these other young rappers that we see out here promoting the lean and jumping around and doing all this mainly reflected and influenced by the generation before which is ours so you can't we got to take blame for that yeah yeah but that's real. if we just had somebody to put their arm around him and just check them sometimes and let them know how to properly move i mean this is a very very powerful influential generation imagine right. what the, the power that they can have and what real they can talk. do yeah yeah and that's all that's all we you know talk about and some of them get the message some of them don't you know what i'm saying but um you know we try to gravitate towards the one to use their platform for more positive, you know, things. I see Bella was asking, um, are we going to be interviewing at the BET Awards? Um, definitely, definitely will be interviewing at the BET, you know, awards without a doubt. We Come will on. not be doing media for BET. We are independent outlet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are separate and all that, but we will 100% be doing media out there. That's what we're going out there for. Got a nice couple of relationships out there, so we plan on doing that, networking and, and doing what we do. Stand a man under dig. You asked me about your hat. I'm a piece of shit for that. I'm gonna get you your hat. Oh man, still free of trust. I'm bad at that, man. I need an assistant because that, that yeah. kind of shit. When it comes to mailing <laughs> and doing stuff, yeah, I can just honestly admit that I'm not good at it. But right. I, I got you, my brother. I promise you, you got a hat on me for free. That's a hundred percent, man. But that's what yeah, man. It is you. The young boy just got to move better. Yeah, yeah. So just quick recap, man. NBA young boy was pretty much violated his probation for being involved in Miami shooting. We were rapping about that real quick. Now, the other thing that happened was uh, Lord Jamar. He came out. You know, we talked about that yesterday. He put a video out. You know, not a video. He was actually doing an interview on, um, I think it was called Ratmatic. And he Mm -hmm. went in on Eminem and whatnot. But 50 Cent, as I pull this up real quick, responded to Lord Jamar. And y'all can see it on the screen. If people will be watching this later. He put, Lord Jamar, you better sit your ass down. I thought you died already, nigga. Get the fuck out of here. You ain't Grand Puma anyway. I'm going to need a bum-ass nigga in one of my shows. I'll be reaching out shortly. He puts his picture up there with clout chasing. So essentially coming to the defense of, you know what I mean, Eminem. Which, which we you know, know. Yeah, we well, always, that, you know what I'm saying, yep. and whatnot. But um, we, we talked about it, and we pretty much agreed that Eminem may have been overrated. And a lot of things that Lord Jamar said was true. We didn't agree fully with him. But what do you think, though, Sam, man, about 50 Cent? You know what I mean? Um, essentially, G checking Lord Jamar in his own words. Well, we came, we we knew yesterday, and we came when we were, excuse me, we kept, we were talking about um, what Lord Jamar said and who would come to his aid because he said that real niggas don't listen to Eminem. And 50 Cent, I said 50 Cent was going to vouch for that game, vouch for that. They said he was the most dangerous in the game. I also reflected back to a time when Eminem was hot because there was a time when he had his little run and mm-hmm. he was dope. And a lot of real niggas fucked with Eminem. About 15 years ago. Yeah. Right. And and I'm, I'm, I'm going to reflect on that because then we had the conversation of whether or not he deserved to be in the top 10 based off of his whole consistent body of work. Mm-hmm. And where does he fit? Is he overrated? Is he underrated? And things like that. And I think that that brought on a great conversation. Now, obviously, we knew that 50 Cent was going to defend him. When we dropped it yesterday, a bunch of the comments was, yeah, hell yeah, he's overrated. I 100% agree. And then you had your son that was kind of fickle and saying, nah, here's my thing. A lot of people, a lot of people, even though I agree with a lot of what Lord Jamar said, you're not bumping Eminem in the gym today. You weren't listening to a lot of the zany ass singles that he came out with. But Eminem could spit. He comes from, he, he's from Detroit. With a bunch of niggas around him doing mm-hmm. what they do, he was ingrained in the culture. Now, this is what I would say about that, though. Once he got on and they seen that white boy that can dunk, oh, they ran with it. And they ran with it heavy. 
but he was respected throughout the culture too. So now I think that because we're in a day and age where people can type so quick and we get on these waves and it's popular to say this and unpopular to say that, that a lot of people who genuinely rock with Eminem back then won't even have the balls to say it because it's not popular to rock with Eminem as a black dude now. And that's not cool. Right. He did his thing. You know yeah. what I mean? He had his time. I agree. The last couple of albums since 2000, I gave yeah. him 2002. You've been high school good. dog then. Like. Yeah, I graduated in 02. <laughs> so I, I 100% agree with that wholeheartedly. He, he fell off in a way that one of the greatest rappers of all time can't do. Jay-Z ain't fall off. A lot of people want to throw Nas under the bus and say that Nas hasn't had a great album since Illmatic. But mm. no one's going to excuse the fact that Nas can still spit. Even though Eminem can still spit, too. Nas is different. But did he did he fall off album-wise, you think, though? His body of work that he puts out? Because that's important it to is. me and everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is a, 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 um, an accumulation of your thoughts that you put into an album. And if you were legendary at one point and considered the greatest at one point, and now you're not, that means that your work has went the other way. You de-evolve instead of evolving, getting better. Yeah, yeah. Like 